Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learned. As you guys already know, this is the show where we go through all the major talking points of the most recent Chelsea game. I usually say loss, but we're now back to back games without a defeat. I think this is as far as it gets for us with the fixtures coming up, but enjoy it for what it is. Um, our last point of the season, last point against Nottingham Forest, again, with the fixtures that we have coming up, we do need to be a little bit realistic. And also, after what I've just seen in the Arsenal game against Brighton, I am not looking forward. Well, I say I'm not looking forward. I cannot wait for Sunday. I cannot wait because we already know what's happening. We're going to Manchester City and it's not going to be pretty. But you know what is going to be pretty? Them title celebrations after the game. Arsenal fans now have to rely on the worst ever Chelsea team to get a result away at the Etihad. And you know what? Good. We have suffered a lot this season. We have gone through a lot of pain. We've gone through a lot of misery, frustration, suffering. And now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to feel that because now you have to rely on us. You need us to get three points, even though your title race is basically already done and finished. I think City can win like one game and draw one. And I think they have the title or something like that. But they're still going to have faint hopes in us. And we know what's happening. City away at the Etihad with a bunch of players on the beach. Lampard in charge. A squad that isn't even good enough to win when they're not on the beach. This is like, I think, our third trip to the Etihad this season. We don't even want to go up there. We know what's happening. But the good thing is, we're going to be letting Arsenal down the process. So you lot, you trophy dodgers, you can hold that. My season feels so much better, even if we're 12th or 11th or wherever the hell we are. Because I know you lot ain't winning nothing. And I'm fine with that. This season is about sabotage, so we'll take that for what it is. Hopefully, we lose at the Etihad, scrape something at Man United, and then we can throw both of their seasons in the bin. And you know what? It won't be that bad of a season if, if that happens. Apologies for the lateness on the video as well, because I was at the Women's FA Cup Final. Chelsea beat Manchester United. Big ups to the Chelsea women, keeping the good name of the club high and proud because the men's team definitely haven't been doing that this season so big up to you guys it's not even been the first year where the women's team has done better than the men they usually do better than the men on a yearly year in year out basis so big up to the Chelsea women big up brilliant performance Sam Kerr with the winner and yeah Bit of a shaky first 10-15 minutes there I won't even lie to be honest United were a better team in the first half but the only stat that matters is the final score. And we won that. So United can hold that. Arsenal, you lot can hold that. And next week when we go to the Etihad, we will hold that. But Arsenal, you can hold that too. Right. On to five things. Because there is... There, I keep saying this every week. What more is there to learn? Like, we know what we're expecting with a lot of these guys. I will say the first thing. Edward Mendy. Thanks for the memories. Appreciate everything you've done for us. 2021 was amazing. It's done. It's over. It's finished. I know people have tried to do this Mendy and Kepa debate. Neither of them are the answer to where Chelsea want to be in the Premier League table. But Kepa right now is much better than Mendy. And they had two shots and they scored two goals. The first one was, it was such a poor lack of communication between the centre-backs and Edouard Mendy. The second one, the ball goes straight at him and he doesn't get a hand on it. It's your first start back, you want to see a little bit more. Now, I know I've spoken about sharpness with certain players before. But Kepa didn't need that when he came into the squad in September. If anything, he was immediately saving us in games. Like if you look at the Aston Villa away game when we won 2-0. Or the Brentford draw. Or numerous other games I can't remember off the top of my head. But there's been key Kepa moments that has helped us. Mendy didn't stand out to me for anything. Anything. He had barely anything to do. And when he did have something to do, he wasn't reliable. And usually Mendy is good in that aspect. I remember early last season when we were flying high and dominating teams. Mendy would have one or two moments to get called out for and he'd be switched on. He wasn't. 
and personally with the contract situation with him and the fact that there's no real agreement or anything and he's likely to leave that might be the last time we see him in a Chelsea shirt but Mendy thank you for the memories big up for everything like you leave with your head held high you've done a lot for this club in the limited time that you spent here but we do need to move on and it is what it is thank you for everything Edward Mendy um second point Kovacic at right back really good performance from him he was one of our better players Driving the ball forward with such confidence. And I know he's not going to be like our second choice right back with Malo Gusto coming in next season or anything like that. But he would still be a very good depth player for us. Like Chalaba isn't one of the players that I would be pushing out the door. And I would be 100% fine with. I would rather we held on to him if it was possible. Because <coughs> I do think a squad player like him is valuable. It all depends on what he wants. Because... He could easily go to another club and have a lot more game time. If that's what he's looking for, then fair play to him. But for me, good performance from him. Hopefully he stays next season. But whatever happens, big up to Trevor Chalaba. Um, What else? Kovacic. Kovacic, my third point. That might be the last time we see him at Chelsea with the injury um, at half time. But Ruben Loftus-Cheek was levels clear of him. And the difference is he just wants to be here. He looked. He had a lot more intent. He was making the better decisions on the ball. We looked a lot better as a team with him on the pitch. And Kova was just dreadful in the time that he spent on the pitch. Even the first goal, you could partly blame that to Kovacic because he was doing some stupidness on the ball in the build-up. That might be his last game in a Chelsea shirt. If, if it is, it is what it is. But I, I don't see any real push to keep him at Chelsea. He's been poor all season. We need to revamp the midfield anyway. And he's been a key part of the midfield that has needed revamping. I don't really care what happens with Kovacic. But again, thank you for everything you've done for us. But it just, it is, it isn't it. It isn't it right now. Um, Another positive though, Raheem Sterling got two goals. Looked a lot better in the second half. First half, I thought he was terrible. Second half though, he showed his experience. Finally showcased some goal-scoring qualities as well. He took that second goal really well. And it looked to give him some confidence. I saw Sterling start to take on players. He played important roles in both of our goals. Brilliant performance from him. I really think Sterling will be a lot better with, be with better players around him. In a system that requires a lot less from him as a player. If it's just him being in the right positions at the right time then that is it, and that's perfect for him. And I think we are relying on him for a little bit more than what his qualities are meant to showcase. But, yeah, I don't mind seeing Sterling in the squad for next season. I think it'll be very hard for us to get rid of him anyway. But it was good to see him pop up with a couple of goals, and I hope he has a bit more influence in the next few games, because uh, we're going to need it. We're really going to need it. Um, last point. No focal point. And for me, both of Nottingham Forest's goals showcase exactly what we're lacking and it's just presence in the attack that awomi guy is such a threat in the air even on the ball like if you remember the away game when we played at their ground and he was tearing us apart that's the sort of profile that we're lacking and i'm not saying sign him up because we're looking for a player of a higher quality but that's the sort of presence that you're missing in attack and that's the sort of presence that we've been missing as well and yeah that was our last point of the season let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my points. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Chelsea Fan TV. Arsenal, hold that. United, hold that. And we'll see you for the podcast this week. Big up and up the Chelsea.